Buenas, buenas. Hello, hello. Welcome to Monday. Hello, Diana. Hello, Ricardo. Hello, Rafael. Welcome. How's everybody doing? Can you guys hear me okay? Hello, hello. Nice to hear. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. Good evening. Night. Good evening. Hello, Henry. Hello. How are you? Good, good. Thank you very much. Nice. Hel Welcome, Alexander. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Welcome aboard. Hello, Delmi. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Tell me, I have not forgotten to send you the presentation. So don't worry, you will get it. Okay, thank you, teacher. All right. Hello, everybody, hello. How are you guys doing with the platform work? work on the platform. We should be finishing section two, starting section three. So you could say that we could we could go that route. The sections are actually pretty pretty easy. So I think it's easier for us to kind of complete them. There's only four sections. And with section two, there is a midterm and that means that in section four you guys have the final exam please remember that we need 80 percent completion on the platform 80 percent ladies and gentlemen so we're going to do a little bit of everything today now we're going to start off uh Last week, we left off in models. And so the way that we have been seeing the models in, in the sections feels like maybe we're jumping from topic to topic, but it has, there's a strategy behind it, right? So if you have been taking classes from the very beginning, from basic, um, most of the things are repetitive. And so they cover, for example, they cover models to a certain extent. Um, they'll, they'll do basic models, for example, when you guys are going through basic and intermediate. And then as you're moving forward into advanced, you start seeing the more, you know, you know, advanced stuff. Jose, hello, welcome. And so what I am going to do. Hello, teacher. How's it going? How's it going? Everything okay, Jose? Yes. <laughs> nice, nice. Hello, Jose Roberto. Welcome, welcome. All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of cover as much as we can in, regla in regards to models, uh, going from the very basics and what we most commonly use. And, and I think we can, we can actually take advantage of that because in conversation, you don't really start to think about, oh my God, what, what type of model should I use or how should I use it? 
it just happens, right? You're having a conversation and you need to do it. So we're going to talk about the most, the, I would say the most commonly used. Jarvin, hello. Hello, Ricardo. Welcome. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, also, I'm going to touch up on the new section, which talks about uh, relative clauses again, right? So uh, I'm going to try to get into that as well. Okay, we're going to get started tonight. I, I have some live worksheets for you guys, and I have the presentation, and I also want to touch up on the platform. So I don't want to finish at the end rushing anything. Let's go ahead and do that right quick. All right. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes. Fan fantastic. Yes, teacher. All right, you guys see that it's platform is hiding in the back and I have my platform all ready to rock and roll with my life worksheets and my presentation. So, so this one here starts off with models. And as you guys can see, it's a little bit, it, there's a lot of, you know, for, for us to read, but I want you guys to know that this is because we got it from a, a, a direct definition. You know, if somebody asks you, what is a model? It's a general overview of what models are. Now, this is important because when you guys are going through English exams and people tell you, hey, you miss uh, models, so I'm going to deduct points for that. What they mean is that if you had to use, for example, can or could or may or might, you might have used it in the wrong way. So we're going to go all the way back and include all three items, basic, intermediate, and then advanced, all in one big swoop. Uh, we're going to use it as a review and also, you know, a little bit of practice. So what is a model? So what I, what I want you guys to kind of take away from this is that a model is a special verb that behaves irregularly in English. Okay. They're also known as model auxiliaries or model auxiliary verbs. They are different from normal verbs like eat, drink, visit, laugh, jump, dance, or follow, right? These are the normal verbs. They give additional information about the function of the main verb that comes after it. These are verbs that express different kinds of things. Uh, when you use them, they express certainty. I am 100% certain, right? Ability, which is I am able to do it with my hands. Willingness, yes, I want to do it. I want to do whatever it is that you're asking me to do. Necessity, permission, obligation, and then possibility. As you guys see, it talks about being able to do something, wanting to do something. How sure are you of doing something? And the degree of possibility. Are you 100% sure, 50% or not really? Okay. Now, they could get a little bit confusing because once again, they behave differently than a regular verb, okay? The most common model verbs we mentioned a few seconds ago, can, could, may, might, should, I'm sorry about that, might, should, ought to, must, have to, will, shall, and would. Everybody okay with these? Okay. I'm pretty sure at one point or another, you guys have seen these on a phrase, on a sentence, or you guys have had to do them, had to perform one of these models. So let's do a quick explanation of how they are used or what is it or when will you see them, okay? Three basic rules, really basic. You have to use the model verbs as is. 
don't change its form and turn it into present, future, or past. Don't add anything to it. You can not add S, E, D, or I, N, G. Okay. Joan can swim. That is the sentence. You cannot say Joan can swim. Can, cannot, can't do the S here. He might go to sleep. Can't add the S. She wills go to Spain next month. Okay. The idea is for you guys not to add anything when you guys see a model verb. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just one moment. Number one is use the model verb as is. Whenever you see a model verb, leave it alone. Don't add anything to it. Try to stick to it as much as possible. Okay. Number two, use the base form of the verb after a model. Don't use to or the full infinitive verb to. The correct sentence is Clara might join them. Okay. Don't say things like Clara might to join them. Don't say things like you must to finish your dinner. You should not to smoke. They can to stay with us this summer. We would not to arrive in time for speech. So in other, in, in other words, Leave two out of these sentences. Don't add them when you guys are trying to voice them out. Okay. So now, you, whenever you add a two, and I think it happens without us wanting to do it. It is quite a common error, so be careful about the two. Make sure not use, to not use the full infinitive form of to join after the word might, will, should, may, or can. So whenever you guys hear the words might, will, should, may, or can, Stick to the base form of the verb, which is join. Whenever you see, for example, here, join, there is going to be this urge for you to say to join. Clara could to join us. But because it's set up as a model verb, you cannot use it and you have to leave it out and you will only use the word join so that it sounds correctly. And the examples are Clara could join us. Clara might join us. Clara must join us. Clara should join us. You can switch to they can stay, they can come, they can leave. Okay. Is everybody okay so far? So far, so good. All right. So we're going to talk about when is it okay to use the different models. All right. Right before we get to that, the third option, the third rule. If you need to use models in the negative form, then use only not. 
after the model verb. Don't add any extra words anymore. Don't use words like isn't, doesn't, don't, won't, wasn't, or aren't. Can't use them. The examples. You should not drink too much. What not to use, which are the words up here. You don't should drink too much. I don't can swim. We don't could call him, right? It sounds really off. It sounds like what, what, what's going on? So in the correct sentence, there, there's no need for you to use not. Okay. So there are other examples of have to in the negative form. They don't, do not have to bring all those bags. I don't have to see it to believe it. We don't have to bring umbrellas today. And so these are, are, these are good examples when you guys are using the word have to. All right. And now the good part, right? Best part. Here they are. These are all the models that we see. I'm going to make it a little bit larger and then I'll just scroll. Okay. Start off with the first. As you can see, there are three cans. Three ways that you can use can. You can use can to show ability. You can show permission and you can use can to show the possibility. However, how you're using them will matter, right? Beth can dance very well. What are you saying? You are saying that she can do it and she does it really well. She's a dancer, you know? It's like when somebody tells you, let's go to a dance. And you say, no, because, you know, I, I can't dance. All right. There are people who cannot dance. And then there are people who can dance. Beth can dance very well. Okay. For permission, can I use your car? Can I use your car? Now, you have to keep in mind that these at the very top, you can use with people that you are very close to. And so you wanna look at it in terms of how close or how far you are from a relationship. You start at the very top. If you're very close, you can start off with can, could, may, might. And then as your relationship puts a little bit more distance, you start to ask in a different way, okay? The level of permission gets farther away from a close relationship. So these here you can use with your friend, con el teacher. Teacher, me presta su carro. Can I borrow your car? And I would say, yes, of course because we're very good friends. Solo que es una homer y le vas a tener que echar 200 dólares de gasolina. Right? Are you sure you want to do that? Right? Are you sure? Are you positive? The teacher can dance really well. Right? How do you know that? Well, because we're close. We're really close. Right? And we go to parties a lot. And you guys see me dancing all the time. So you guys are saying, oh my God, he can really dance. Mm -hmm. Then there is the way of possibility. Driving in heavy rain can cause an accident. And so these are the three examples for can. What else can we use can for? Let's see if you guys, we can use the chat. can and don't say can i use the bathroom 
because you know what I'm going to say, right? I don't know. Can you? Right? Right? That's what teachers do. You can use any of the three. You can use either ability, permission, or possibility. I think we used another one earlier, right? When you bought, when you want somebody to lend you something. And that's another thing that I wanna I wanted to quickly touch up on, right? Can I borrow? Estás pidiendo prestado? Can I borrow? If you are giving something to somebody, then you are lending. So borrow, you are asking. Lending, you are giving. You are doing. Now, there's a couple of ways of saying borrow, right? There's a, you could say, um, there's the past tense, which is borrowing, which you guys can hear. Uh, let's see, borrowing. Give me one second, it got stuck. You can say borrowed. Did I, I think I, it changes a little bit. And I think I spelled it wrong at the very beginning. I'm sorry about that, guys. Now, if you notice, right, borrowing, borrow, some people only use it the farther you get. If you are talking to a friend and you're talking about a cell phone, then you're going to say, let me use. Can I use your phone? Can I use your laptop? Can I use your gun? Whoa, what, the gun? No, I know. Not the gun. Can. You are telling somebody that something can be done. The ability to do something. Asking for permission when you have a really close relationship with somebody. Can I use your phone? Can I use your laptop? Can I use your car? When you guys are using possibilities, driving in heavy rain can cause an accident. Driving without your seatbelt can cause injuries, right? So those are the things that you, you can say that way. Now we start off with may. May expresses permission. May I borrow, here it is, your umbrella. May I borrow your book. You can say, may I go to the restroom or bathroom. May I take this phone call? Um, I think in some universities, they allow you to bring your cell phone. They just don't allow you to answer them in class. So you can tell you know, the professor, professor, can I take this call? It's very important. May I take this call outside? And then, you know, the professor will say, yeah, go ahead. Right? And you step outside and take Peter, that Teacher, may I ask you a question? Yes, Raf. Um, why we can say, can I use your car? And, and we, and it wouldn't be incorrect. For, I mean, for example, um, you just said that when you say, may I go to the bathroom or, but I can't say, 
can I go to the bathroom to ask for permission, right? Right. So, so, so here's the deal. Imagine, I want you to think of it like this. You can say it. somebody will probably not be, you know, they're not going to react in a too negative of a way unless unless they're teaching you about proper grammar unless you are uh, you know with a with a teacher who's really really focused on those little things however the proper okay. the proper way to do it or or the few instances that you would be able to use it is for example if there's a security guard standing outside the bathroom okay and in order for you to be able to use it, you need to ask permission. So you would go up to the security guard and you would say, can I use the bathroom? And the security guard would say, yes, of course, please go ahead. Because you want that permission to be able to go in. When you are sitting in a classroom and you ask the teacher, can I go to the restroom? He's not the security guard. Okay. And so he doesn't know whether you can or you cannot, right? So some teachers will tell you, I don't know, right? That's why they say it, because because, because we don't know if, if, if you are able to do it. Como aquí te está diciendo, you want to use yeah. the ability, right? Now... You can do it though, Raf. You yeah. can you can be in a class and say, hey teacher, can I please go to the bathroom? And the teachers will say, Yeah, go ahead. You can also say, May I use the restroom? And it will also be okay. So both ways you can use them. However, yes, just because my uh, yeah, that correct because for example, if I say <laughs> okay, go ahead. I was gonna tell you if may I go is the correct way. Yeah, so the correct way to show permission would be, for example, in that case, may I use your car? It would be um, the best the best way, maybe? Well, well, that, that's the thing. Now- I'm asking for permission. Well, but, but who are you asking to? So that's the other thing that you have to think about when the models are okay. coming and when they're being uh -huh. used. So, Let's say you were to go to a complete stranger. Okay. May I use your car? Ahí lo puedes ocupar. You can use it right there. Okay. Because it's very polite and it's like the it's like the most polite way of doing it. However, because oh, you okay. don't know the person, Raf, what is that person going to tell you? Um, the most probable thing is not. <laughs> he will say no, right? He will say no. Now, <laughs> Yeah. If you know somebody, right, you won't say, may I use your car? You are only going to say, hey, man, can I use your car? And he will probably say, yeah, but, you know, make sure you put some gas on it. You know, I'm sorry. Make sure you put gas in it. Right? Make sure you put gasoline. And so, okay. so, yeah, you could say it, but you have to remember that there's like different levels of how close. Uh -huh and what type of questions you can ask. And so we're okay. going to talk about that, right? So, so, yeah. So it depends on the relationship, mm -hmm. the level of trust, and how close or how far you are with that person. Okay. Okay. All right. So in this particular case, right, the, the example that we use, may I borrow your umbrella? Right? It's, it's, it's my personal item. So you cannot just go up to somebody and say, can I borrow your umbrella, right? No, you can't, right? You wanna ask for that extra level of permission. May I, and be extra polite. So in this particular case, you can say, may I borrow your umbrella? And more than likely the person will say, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, use it. Just give it back, you know, by a certain time frame. All right, now, I want you guys to also think of what are the chances that somebody will give you something in terms of percentage as well. Can. It's a really high level. 
could, may, those are getting in between like the 50s. Might, should, ought to, those are getting a little bit higher. Must is, I would say the, the must and half are the two highest in this line of percentage. If you have to do something, it is not a matter of whether you want to do it or not. It is not a matter of, you know, um, you know, how are you feeling? This has to do with if you don't do it, you are going to die. For example, you must stop drinking or your liver yeah. is going to explode and you're going to die. Do you have a choice here? Do you have a choice of saying, you know what? Mm, no. I'm going to think about it. No, you have to stop, no. right? Because if you keep drinking, yeah. Kapoom. You're just gonna, yeah, you're just going to yeah. explode one day. And so, so think of it that way as well. You know, the lower you go here, the levels change as well. All right. So let, let's, let's keep on going with these. So, so we left off at May expresses permission. The example that we use, may I borrow your umbrella? Might conveys possibility. Okay, so here we go with possibility again. I might move to Vietnam next year. What is the percentage? You know, I might go to, let me see, where, where do I want to go? Oh, you know what? I want to go to France. There's a possibility that I'm going to France next year. I might be going to France next year. Okay. And then you can follow it up with a question of what's stopping you now. And then, you know, you're going to come back and say, no, you know, I'm broke. I'm saving for that. And so as soon as I have enough money, I'm going to go if I get to a certain amount. Okay. Then we go into should. Now, should has to do with advice. Okay. And you have to be careful with advice. Do you guys remember when I told you about advice? Only who gives advice? Only who? How about experts? Yeah, well, you know what, Marisela? Yeah, friends do because they're experts in relationships. Yes, I will accept that. Se han fijado que todos sus amigos son unos expertos en relaciones interpersonales. They will give you a lot of advice. Déjalo, hombre. Mm, está muy negro, está muy blanco, muy chaparro, muy alto. You know, they'll give you all sorts of advice. That's, that's okay. Yeah. Friends can give you advice. Now, it's important. Usually friends give you advice because we ask. And there is the key, right? We ask for advice and then our friends give it to us. So the same thing goes for everything that we do. Don't give out advice to a friend unless that friend asks you for it, right? Because then it comes off as, you know, you trying to fix the world and you don't even know how to do it. So that, you know, that's what we usually think. Now, there are other people who give advice and these are experts. For example, doctors. Right. My advice is, and we just talked about it, to stop drinking. My advice is to take a diet. Because there are consequences, right? If you're not careful with your diet, you, you might get, a, you know, a, a, you know, you might get diabetes, for example. If you don't stop drinking, you might ruin your internal organs. Um, who else would give advice in this particular case? If we're talking about doctors, and if we're talking about experts, who else do you guys think would give advice? 
counselor. A counselor? Yeah, man, that, yeah. yeah. That's ex that's their job, actually. A lawyer, yes, of course, yes. Counselor, a lawyer. Teacher. El, el <laughs> teacher, the English teacher. When the English teacher says, hey, listen, let me give you a little bit of advice, right? Now, yeah. they do it because they are experts, right? And they're going to give you the advice based on what they see, based on what they know based on the exams that they just saw. So with that in mind, you should revise the intro to your essay. Oh, now what happened here? This could be advice from a friend. Hey, read my essay and tell me what you think. And then you come back and you say, hey, man, you know, I read it. You should, you should revise the intro to your essay. If you know, there might be something missing. Hmm? It could be your English teacher, but not English as in spoken English, English as in in the United States, English literature, right? Because they're the ones that make you write essays. So they could revise it for you and give you the advice, right? Hey, you should revise the intro to your essay. Something's missing. Should. Aquí. So whenever you guys are giving advice, we are using should. We have ought to. Remember, this one's the one that sounds kind of weird, oughta. Sometimes people say it really weird. You, you ought yeah. to use it for logical conclusions. After driving all day, you ought to be tired. Okay. After working all day, aren't you guys tired at the end of the day? Driving, yeah. Swimming. How about teaching? For lawyers, right? Latig, ¿cómo se dice? Latig latigating? No, I don't think you could say it like that. <laughs> Así se dice. ¿Cómo se dice? Maricela, ¿se puede decir así? Latiga. No, no se puede decir latigando, ¿verdad? Latig. I know that it's latig. Cuando la... There's a word that lawyers use. La... Like when they say... What... Litigando. ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo, de... ¿Cómo decir? Litigando. Litigando. ¿Es that how you say it? Oh, my goodness. I was really off. Liti. Así. But in English, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Latig, la, latigate. Yeah, that's, that's, so when you latigate, you are in a courtroom and you are either defending or you are, well, it's latigation, right? They say, lat, they say latigation, they say latigate. I have, I have heard it a couple of times. I'm going to look it up and see how it is. Pero en español litigando, Maricela. I, I like that one. It sounds pretty cool. ¿Qué hace vos todo yes. el día? Litigando. Oh, whoa. Uh. That sounds, all right. So now to use at two, remember that you're using a logical conclusion. And this one, you don't hear it very often. It is not that common to use. Okay, yes. we come to must. This is a strong obligation. You must be at the train station at 3 p.m. to meet the guest. <laughs> Latigando. <laughs> it does, it does. Sorry about that. Sorry. Litigando. No, I got it. We got it. We got it. All right. Must, we do use a lot, right? We must. You must, you must join us at the game. You must go to the, to the, go to La Copeja, right? We have a game on. You have to be there. This is an obligation. When you guys say must, when somebody tells you must, you have to do it. You must, okay? Have to matches it. But 
when we talk about a strong obligation with have to, it's more of a request. Somebody's asking you, you have to come on time if you don't want to miss the bus. So that's the person letting you know. Uh, it could be your boss as well. You have to be here on time or else I am going to give you a written warning or whatever it is that they do, right? So these two f fall under the same category. However, you can use them a little bit differently. You must be at the train station at 3 p.m. However, both of them are a strong obligation, very, very strong, okay? Will is used to state a promise. I will stop eating sugary and salty foods. I promise. Hmm? You promise? Yeah, I promise. I will stop going to the Chupadero. Te lo prometo. Ya no vuelvo. Right? And then you have to, you have to stick to it because it's a promise. I will stop going out. Shall expresses suggestion. Shall I pour you a cup of green tea? You can use it this way. Shall I get you Teacher. some more sugar? Yeah, yeah. Yes, Raf. Um, does will have another meaning? Because I remember that I've seen certain mm -hmm. phrases sometimes that have different meaning of will. So could you tell us something about it or well, it doesn't have any there, other meaning? There is the will as if you're staying you know how somebody tells you somebody asks you for a favor right y vos sos completamente okay. capaz de hacerlo you can definitely do it lo que te hacen falta son las ganas eso que te hace falta que te hacen okay. falta las ganas is the will I don't the, feel like that. oh yes yes like a noun right the willingness uh huh yes your final will, for example. Yeah. There we go. Uh, the final yeah. will, también, is another one, which is the 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 contract, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. El teacher yeah. passed away. ¿A quién le va a dejar la Homer? <laughs> pues, se la voy a dejar yeah. a Delmi, porque a Delmi le gustaba mucho la Homer. Y va, wow, entonces, va. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A José y Alexander le voy a dejar mi lago. Eh, se llama el lago de Lopango. Eh, it does belong to me, and you guys can have half of it. <laughs> A mi amigo Jorge le queda la laptop. Enjoy your vacation. There we go. There, there we go, right? Thank and you, so, sir. And then so so there's a different ways to use will, willingness. Yeah. Um, in this particular case, what you are implying is that willingness. And what you are saying is, okay. I will stop. Deja de salir con tus amigos. Sí, mi amor, te lo prometo. I will stop going out with my friends on Mondays. Pero Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, salgo con mis amigos. Nah. And then so, but at least, you know, it's a good step. Monday. So the will to stop. It's a promise, Raf. Keep that in mind. If you say will and willingness in a sentence, I will stop eating sugary stuff. That is a promise that you have to keep. Yeah. All right. And then we come to would. These are habits in the past. Or you could use it as a polite request. Would you close the windows, please? He would visit his mom every Friday before she died. These are the two examples where you could use would. He would visit his mom every Friday before she passed away, before she died. Would you close the windows, please? And these are all the models. Now, depending on how you use them on sentence, then they become either advice, um, they either become a possibility, uh, which means they can also be obligations. So depending on which one you use, it can either be obligation, possibility, or, or um, suggestions, advice. And these are the ones that we use is just how you use them that really makes the difference all right 
So this is what we've been seeing in section 2.0. Pretty much, you know, everything that has to do with models, modeled verbs, and where they come from and how we use them. Okay, moving over to the next section, which is already in 3.0, we have the relative clauses. I don't know, has any of you guys already gotten to that point? If you guys already went into section three, 3.0, 3.1, they already started talking about relative clauses. Now, there's a few of these relative clauses in time uh, when you see a relative clause in general. Now, when you guys hear of relative clauses, they're very specific because you guys will see that it is either who or that, which or that, or where, when, and whose. And these are the examples. Now, relative clauses are used to give extra information about nouns in the main clause without starting another sentence, okay? A relative clause starts with a relative pronoun. So then we have the examples, right? Subject or object pronoun for people. That's the woman who bought my house. Uh, that's the woman who bought my house. Mm -hmm. It could be a subject or object pronoun for animal or thing. The horse which Mary was riding is very friendly and beautiful. The horse which Mary was riding is very friendly and beautiful. Where refers to a place. We found the wood where I used to go. We found the lake where I used to go for summer. Okay. When refers to time expressions. I will never forget the day when I graduated. You guys can say that. And whose is for possession. And this one can be used for people, animals, or things. The mother whose child is missing is very sad. Se le perdió el bichito. And she's very sad. Okay. And so when you guys start seeing those portions, when you guys start hearing relative clauses, who, that, which, that. You can use who and that on people. If you are using them as objects, I'm sorry, as subject or object pronouns. You can use which or that on animals or things, not on people. Make sure you guys don't use it like in that way. Some people get really upset, right? Where refers to a place when refers to a time, and whose is the owner. We want to know who the owner is. Okay. And then, a little bit on the examples. Whose, where, and when. These are really used that much. We use who and that. We use which and that. We, there's another one that is called whom that you guys can also hear, but people don't use it that often. I would say that these are the most common. These are some of the examples. Let me go ahead and move this one here a little bit. There we go. I think I had made it too long, too big. Okay. Okay. You can use years when using when. 1821 is the year when Napoleon Bonaparte died. It's a really good example. Okay. You can use, yeah. So now the minute you say whom, that is already telling somebody that there is a person involved. So yes, the person whom I deliver my car to is him, right? Yes, 
you guys can also use it in a question. Whom am I speaking with? Why can I use whom? What am I trying to say? Who's in the other line? Who's in the other phone? A. What am I trying to identify? Whom also means I am trying to find out who is the person. So in reality, when you are asking who am I speaking with, whom is actually the correct way of saying it. Because you are not talking about a bunch of people, right? You want to know one person. So whom is a really good way of saying it. Now, people say, who am I speaking to? And that's acceptable. However, if you want to get all, you know, Nazi grammar crazy about it, it would have to be whom. Whom do I have the pleasure of speaking to today? Whom am I speaking to? That is the correct way. All right, so this, you guys will see it again in sections, I believe sections 3.1, 3.2, so on and so forth. And I think these, these are pretty, this, ah, this, this I think you guys got. Let me go ahead and take you guys to the platform real quick and give you guys a quick. Okay, so how are you doing with the platform? How can you tell, how can you see it? Remember, you have the progress button at the very top. You click on progress and it will tell you what is it that you have completed and what is it that you have accomplished so far and what do you need to do? So my, Average right now is at 20%. I'm not getting a certification because in order for me to get a certification, I need, how much do I need? 80%. 80%. But, you know, it's understandable. We haven't started section three and we haven't started section four. So these are completely off. Section two, I still need like some acknowledged checks, I believe. Let me go ahead and back up out of here. And I can kind of take a look at that. My midterm, I already completed. I think we completed that one with us, everybody in there. These are the models with multiple use. Okay, so I'm missing three sections at the very end, which is the verbs of belief, listening exercises, reading exercises, and then we finish section two and we go into section three. Let me go ahead and go through that. Okay, if you guys like, what we can do is we can go through the knowledge checks, some of them. Uh, we can do that tomorrow throughout the whole class. And then eventually we will come to section three or maybe the exam. Oh, I'm missing two on the exam. Okay, so that I'll finish those two today. And then we begin lesson three. Yeah, there it is. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. So you guys will see some of those there. The knowledge check has to do with it. Okay. So what we can do tomorrow is we can go through the knowledge checks in section two or the last portion of section two, <clears throat> like 2.5 and onwards we can go all the way up to section three and then do some of these knowledge checks together and see how far we can get if you guys are able to complete it before we do in class even better right because we can go right through it and if you guys like something in terms of the material we can stop and discuss it 
And then we see how far we can get in section three. Remember that in this module, we only have four sections. So we can take all of this week on section three. And then on the last week, we complete section four and the final exam. Okay. All right, everybody. Please remember that we have our WhatsApp. I think there were some questions there. Was everybody able to complete the knowledge checks from section two that you guys needed? Let me go back to section two. I think I saw it. Let me see if I have it, just to double check. I think this is one that came up. Knowledge check 2.5. Verbs must be conjugated. And some of them are ignores. Identify, deal with, aggravated, or I think somebody had put aggravates, aggravated. Jill Dong always aggravated his problems. Okay, so he was making, he always made his problems. So aggravated, avoids, runs into, unexpectedly encounters, solving and causes. This is for section 2.5, all right? And then the next one that we came, well, there's no knowledge check into the listening exercises, but I haven't done those correctly. All right, I haven't finished those yet. Okay. If you guys haven't completed the knowledge check, remember that tomorrow we're gonna go through them. And then once we get to 2.10, uh, we can do them together. And then that way we can all move forward to section three. If you guys already did, well done, right? Try to get as far as you can. Try to see if you can get to that 100. Although 80% is what you need to get your certification, all right? All right, everybody. I think that's it for tonight. Thank you guys for coming in today. Really appreciate seeing all of you. Happy Monday. Hope to see you guys tomorrow. And I'll give you guys back two whole minutes. Woohoo! Es que este teacher, hombre. Pues sí. Benevolente es el. Take care, guys. Good night, teacher. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.